Man, what the hell? Hi, it's me, Burbingish, and I made the fake Layer 2 Bloodweave leak, and I'm gonna tell you how I made it. The game looks a little bit rushed because I made it in 3 days due to the fact that I was scared that Layer 2 was actually going to drop and just ruin my efforts. So uh, don't complain if you see any low quality parts. Alright, let's start from the beginning. 3 days ago, there was a fake Layer 2 leak that looked pretty convincing, made by a guy named Physionix if that's how you pronounce it, I figured out, hey, I have a bit of scripting knowledge, and hey, I have a platform to post stuff on. So I DM'd him asking if it was cool if I made my own little Deep Woken Layer 2 leak, and he said yeah, and that started off my little development journey. The first thing I made was a little Deep Woken character, and it was honestly just my Roblox character with a bunch of Deep Woken clothes slapped onto it. And like any sane person making a fake copy of a game, I went straight to the free models page and grabbed some random stolen assets. Like this pair of beta stage smith gloves, and this serpent's edge, and then I threw it all on the character. I did have to make some animations, like a walk animation that I took from my uh, Detroit Become Human game, that I made a video on which you should totally watch later, and an idle animation that uh, well I mean, it's an idle animation, I don't think there's much effort. Oh yeah, and also the sprint animation, but we don't talk about that one. But now that I had the character done and all that, I had to plot out how I wanted the video to go. I watched the Deep Woken Layer 2 teaser and saw that there was like a scene with Ragoozer walking through like a bunch of snow, right? And then doing like parkour of air dashes and navigating and stuff. So I stole that idea and threw together a similar looking map and now we have a place to walk through. looks uh okay what i was thinking of at this stage was how i was going to show off the combat moves that i intend to make because i don't know if you guys noticed but no same person just runs around the map throwing out their mantras so i had to make an enemy of some sort i can use as like a testing dummy another thing i saw in the layer 2 teaser was this goofy looking mud skipper with like a bunch of arms attached onto it People in my comments have uh, informed me that it's called a uh, carbungle, a uh, car, uh, carbunk. Uh, I don't know what it is. It sounds like an Italian dish, not gonna lie. So, well, anyways, it's back to the free models page. I go. Since there wasn't exactly a mudskipper model, I made do of this little uh, Ganymede freshie that I found, and I just threw a bunch of arms on there and made it a little bigger. I tried to find a left hand model, but apparently people only like modeling right hands for whatever reason. Pretty sad day for uh, left handers. So now with a map, my character, and an enemy, I have an idea of how this was going to play out. It was going to start off here, and I slowly like snow walk over to the cave that I made. And when I get there, this funny looking enemy will aggro onto me, and I hit it with a couple blood weave moves that I have not made yet. I had some ideas for moves like a blood bow, a space ripper stingy eye, and a... I like the ideas that I had, but I also wanted to see what other ideas the Deep Woken community had. So I asked in player general. Finally somebody responds, and the only person that actually responded was the guy that made the initial leak. Saying that a blood wisp that you have to summon by committing would be cool. Also, Physionix, thank you for being the only one that responded, uh, you're a real one. Even though it isn't combat related, I thought it was a cool enough idea and started to work on it. I made a little animation for it and marked where the slash would actually happen with an animation event. It will play the slash noise and a blood particle effect whenever it activates the event. And uh, also summon the wisp, that's an important part too. I scrapped together a wisp model out of two pyramids. I carved a hole in both of them and then put some red neons and made it glow red. It looks very edgy, but that's just on theme with a blood attunement. And uh, now I have a little wisp buddy. A little less cute than others, but who cares. And uh, here's the final result for the blood wisp. It was gonna get late soon, so I quickly started on the blood bow. But let me tell you guys a small fact about myself. I can do scripting, I can do a little bit of animation, but I cannot model whatsoever. Like I opened up Blender and this crap looks like a whole plane cockpit. I don't I don't know how people navigate this stuff. So uh when I needed a bow model I 
And there we go, I am simply just the best modeler. I then made a quick uh, bow pulling animation and shooting animation, but it was like 11 at that time, so I just went to sleep. Day 2, it's time to continue on the blood bow. And speaking of blood related weaponry, I'm giving away this uh, blood thirsty dark steel, so join the discord and sub if you want to join. Anyways, uh, first thing I added to the blood bow was this little white line that indicated where it was going to shoot. Whenever the bow would shoot, it would like expand and disappear like it was like a big laser effect. I also took inspiration from a bolt piercer and added like a little circle icon in front of it and it made it spin. It would expand and blow up just like the laser effect. So far it looks pretty solid, solid enough for like an hour or so's worth of work, but I wanted more of like a charge effect. And that's why I used this like fancy particle emitter trick that uh, Physionics taught me how to do. Again, thank you Physionics. Uh, basically how it works is the particle emitter emits all of the particles in like a little circle formation, like a little sphere formation. And then the particles move inward to the center. But some people wanted it to look a little more fancy, so people added uh, squash number sequences so that whenever like a particle spawns it would spot like start off as a circle and then it gets warped so like it looks like it's getting sucked in by a black hole or something it's a pretty cool trick with uh, particle emitters and now it looks like i'm pulling in like blood ether or something from the air i was pretty content with that uh little bow effect so i moved on to the next mantra the the first thing i did was just randomly place lines inside a box manually I knew there was a bunch of ways I could script it to like generate a bunch of lines automatically, but one, I can't really control how good the randomly generated ones look, and two, I'm not spending 3 hours figuring out like a bunch of math just for something I can do in like 10 minutes. Anyways, uh, I first made the appearing animation, I tweened it so that it extends out from one end of the line, and I had it repeat for every one of the line inside like the folder. Interesting thing about this is that uh, it may seem like I'm just extending the line by stretching like one end of it to the other, but uh, it's actually making it bigger and then moving it forward for the extension effect. This mantra was also pretty simple, I just added like the little circle underneath the effect just for a little something extra, and uh, that's all for the- Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna make the joke for the third time. So far I got a map, two combat mantras, and a utility mantra. Plus, an enemy without any animations. So, next things on the list is make the animations for the enemy. And uh, since the little Ganymede Eldritch Horror is now planned to get close to me, it didn't need any attacking animations. So, uh, all I had to do was make an idle and a running animation. And the idle is about as easy as you would assume an idle animation to be. And uh, as for the running animation, the one where he hits the Nene, it was also easy considering that any, like, or animation like mistakes that I make only adds to the spooky monster theme. <laughs> right now everything is actually looking uh, pretty solid and I could just leave it off here. Uh, but it would also be really short and have a pretty lame cutoff. So the, for the rest of this day I just added more stuff to the map. Like this parkour section, this whole entire staircase section, this massive church on top of the mountain. And uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do with the church at the time. But since it's like 11 again, I want to sleep as well. <laughs> Alright, day 3, and uh, here's the list of stuff I still needed to do by the end of this. Add air dashes. Add a little blood teleport thing that I wanted to implement. Figure out what to do with the church. And uh, a bunch of general polishing. It's honestly a pretty small list for like a game, for like game development standards. Air dashes were incredibly simple, I made like a dash animation, which is literally just one frame rep like repeated twice. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, D-Bulkan has uh, mostly pretty simple animations for his uh, characters. For the actual dash part, I, uh, I just added a body velocity to the player going forward. And uh, in the middle of the dash, I spawned in a part that has like a ring decal on it behind the player for, you know, that little ring you see. When you, you know, you saw it in like the teaser on that, uh, you know, oh my. Okay, whatever. Uh, next on the list is blood teleport. My idea was to have like a copy of the player cover up the player, like like it was swallowing it from the blood up and all that, and it would uh, and then it would like dissolve into a blood puddle, and, and then uh, the blood puddle would show back up where the player was aiming, and it like reforms them and all that. Uh, pretty cool idea. It's not very deep y but we never thought they would add ABA air combos to deep so who really cares? 
I first made a little puddle up here with tween service and then I made like a copy of the legs and made them extend up from the ground from like the puddle right to cover the real legs. Then I did the same with the torso, then the arms, then the head, like it was like going through the body from the ground up. It, uh, after that I made the player invisible and then reversed everything so that it would like dissolve back into the puddle and then I teleported player and just did it all again reversed. In the end I changed my mind to have the initial effect be the player sinking into the puddle. I felt like it would be cooler if the blood player effect was like a one time thing for it just showing up. And uh, that's like the whole blood teleport thing finished. I'm going to move uh, general polishing up the list because the church part is the ending and it would be cooler if it was the last thing. Uh, so for general polishing I added a little, little floating chain around the wisp, the wisp was looking pretty empty. With just, it's just like kind of like an obsidian block so uh, I made it so that activating the wisp it makes you take damage because you know you're kind of like doing the whole Then I added a location thingy at the top of the screen. If you've seen the actual uh, leak that I made, you might have noticed that the location thing is incredibly accurate. And uh, that's because the Deep Woken GUI I found on the on like the little toolbox had like a couple of scripts in it which were written by actual Deep Woken devs. And these scripts manage the health bar and other GUIs. That includes the location indicator. So I took a look inside the script. Uh, that's not a good sign. Man, what the hell are these variable names? Because of what it says at the top there, I'm just going to assume that the variables actually have names and that the, the, the compiler just assigned like the variables really simple names with uh, like v1, v2, v3 with v standing for variable. But yeah, that did make uh, reading it very difficult. After interpreting this code, I uh, figured out how their little location system works and I just added my own custom location to it. It's uh, actually really simple, for each location there's just like a really big invisible part that marks like all of the boundaries, it's like covers the entire thing. And then the script just detects whenever you're in or like close enough to the part. Well anyways, uh, time for the final piece of the puzzle and that was the question of what do I do with this massive church at the top of this mountain? The name of the place was uh, the Divers Respite, so I figured I should probably have a, like a diver in there. So I made a little Vesperian black diver and placed him inside the church and uh, stuck a shattered katana through his stomach. I still didn't have any idea on how I wanted to end off the video but I had like a brilliant idea. What, wouldn't it be funny if when you approach the diver, he pulls out like the sword from his stomach and it becomes like a boss fight or something. Like something out of Dark Souls. When I thought of this idea I was also in call with my friends and one of them also had an idea. What if when the diver pulled out the sword from his stomach, he also grew like free limbs. Uh, so yeah, here it is. I'm almost at 2k, so if you found this entertaining, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. And uh, if you haven't seen the actual video, it's in the description. But uh, Ark, please hire me.